All right, everybody, this video is about my R1200R, a 2015 liquid cooled model, which I turned into a touring bike. Um, so basically a naked bike into a touring bike. This video is gonna explain what I added to it and my reasoning behind that. Welcome to sunny Florida and I've got it just about the way I want to have it at this point. Everything that I've got on there has been tested. This video is not sponsored in any way. I'm a small enough YouTube channel as it is. Nobody would sponsor my video. I bought all this stuff with my own money. Let's go through it here. First of all, when you're touring, obviously, one of the main aspects of touring is comfort. How am I going to turn this uh, power cruiser slash naked bike into a touring bike. Well, what is a naked bike missing? Obviously a windscreen. I installed a Puge, P-U-I-G, touring screen. I will say that this touring windscreen by itself does a lot to take the pressure off your chest. But what it doesn't do is um, completely eliminate helmet buffeting. So to go with the windscreen, what I did is I put this uh, Pewy clip-on visor on and now let me tell you this thing is a miracle it really really works the medium size is just right for this touring windshield so that's part one of comfort touring comfort with a naked bike uh judge for yourself how, how you like the look of it so the next thing is the seat all right so i had the standard seat on here i could last maybe about two and a half to three hours before my butt started feeling it you need to replace the seat so what i ended up doing is i got the sergeant tall seat which equals the seat height of the high seat from BMW, which is 820 millimeters. I don't know, my brain still works in millimeters because I've been in Europe so long. And I'll put the inches on the screen. There's also a little bit higher sports seat, which is 840 millimeters tall. But from what I heard with that one is because it gives you such a lean forward due to the height, you may actually end up needing bar risers and I didn't want bar risers. Like I said, the standard seat was fine for me. It was actually a, a bit lower than this one. I think it was just 800 or 790 millimeters, but, uh, and I'm six foot two, but the tall seat gives me more leg room and the comfort is excellent. Let me say last weekend, I did a 300 mile ride from Southwest Florida around Lake Okeechobee. It was about six and a half hours in the saddle and perfect, perfect. I did not think about my butt once. It's, it's a little bit firm at first, but the firmness is actually good in the long run. Oh, one thing I did want to note is that there's two different versions of this. There's the CFX carbon version and the DTX with grip zones. From my research, the CFX with carbon is very slippery. So that's why I chose the DTX version with the grip zones. It has this kind of uh, grippy material, rubberized material, and here's the grip zones. I don't slip on it at all, and it's very easy to reposition myself. The next thing is luggage. Luggage is a key component to touring. Now I went with the Shad bags. These are Shad SH36 bags. And if you've seen my Tracer 700 video, I've had these before. I bought these again. Shad makes really good bags. They actually are much cheaper than the OEM bags. So this is part of the uh, Shad 3P mounting system. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you what it looks like with the bags unmounted. They've got reflectors in the back. And let me just give you kind of a view of what this looks like from the side here um, and from the front. They're about actually just about as wide as the handlebars. They have 36 liters of volume, but one little tip I wanted to give you is that uh, it was always the case that when I opened them up, stuff would just fall out. So this solves the problem. They have these really cheap inner bags. I think they're like 30 bucks each. When you get to your hotel at night, take the bags out, bring them into your hotel, leave the hard bags attached and you're good. And if you need something, just leave them kind of half unzipped like this and you can like reach in here, get your uh, whatever, your tire repair kit, your pump, your clothes, whatever you need on your tour and nothing's gonna fall out. It's all in there securely. So that's the great thing about these. The next thing here is this Shad 
SH48 top case. Now I think this is the right size top case for a long tour in this bike. It's got 48 liters of volume, but obviously with a top case, you don't want to um, pack it heavily. You don't want weight high. So you can use this for bulky things, winter jackets, rain covers for the bike, things that are bulky, but don't weigh a lot. Actually, as a matter of fact, I can put a laptop in there, like a MacBook Pro or something in a hard case and it gives you plenty of space to do that also and then put some soft stuff on top of that. The reason I like hard luggage is it's lockable and that's always really important if you're stepping out into a cafe or restaurant on the road. We all know how that goes. Hard cases are, in my opinion, the way to go if you're doing street touring. And in terms of volume, this is more than enough. So judge for yourself. If you think it looks too big, you know, the extra space is very, very welcome in my opinion. And you know, usually when I'm taking my short rides, it's obviously not on there. I'll show you what it looks like inside. It's got plenty of room. You can put in, see, really smooth mechanism. Got my helmet in there, my motorcycle jacket with back protector and everything, and my gloves are underneath there. And it even still has room on top for a pair of pants or whatever else you want. So two helmets will go in there easily. Laptop will go in there easily in a hard case. Camera equipment, whatever you want to secure and you don't want to put it in side cases. But since I'm back here, one thing I did want to note is that I have a tail tidy on here. And that's a Evotech Performance tail tidy here. And you'll see, uh, yeah, I covered my license plate. You'll see with the tail tidy on and the standard um, turn signals, it's basically just fitting. I mean, this turn signal here is like right up against the hard case. Doesn't does, It can still flop or move a little bit. I mean, it's not gonna break the turn signal or anything, but it's, it's tight. So if you've got LED turn signals, even better. And if you don't have a tail tidy like me, then uh, then it's at, their, their turn signals are going to be way out here, so it's not even going to be an issue. Just another quick point here. A lot of people like to get the BMW luggage because, oh, you don't have to take another key with you. Big deal, right? Well, you know, with the BMW luggage, it's you have to always use this key right here. And what's an extra key, right? And this key can actually be used for both this uh, the side cases, and I swapped out the tumbler. When you buy the SH36s, they give you an extra tumbler if you ever buy one of their top cases. Very easy swap, I swapped that out. So I have one key, this one key right here for all three bags. Then uh, obviously the back seat's free. So do with it as you will. My idea is to uh, just put this Nelson rig uh, tail bag here. It is the, let's see here. Nelson Rig Commuter Sport tail bags. Perfect fit for the back seat. And you can put in your rain gear, your winter gloves, uh, your water bottle, whatever you want. Or, you know, use your pillion seat for your pillion. <laughs> You know, you could do that too, or put a roll bag on there with extra clothes, camping gear, whatever. All right, so the next thing is, I'm not a tank bag fan at all. I don't like something big in front of me. The tank is already very big on this bike, and then I don't have a tank bag on my GSA either. And as a matter of fact, this was my solution for my 1200 GS Adventure, is I got a bar bag. And this Moscow Moto Nat bag is awesome. You can put your essentials in there, candy bar, sunglasses, lip balm, whatever you need, wipes for your visor, change. You can even put in your uh, like sun pass, whatever you want, just stick it in there. And it's plenty of room. I mean, unless you're carrying a big camera with you. And then if you are, just put it in your tail bag or in your top case if you wanna secure it. But yeah, that, uh, you can charge your batteries in here, put some battery, like GoPro batteries or drone batteries. It's the perfect size. I've actually tricked it out a bit and I'll get to that. Uh, well, let's get to it now. What's my navigation solution? Well, I'll tell you, my navigation solution is this old iPhone 7 here, tethered to the phone that I'm using right now to record this. I used a quad lock belt mount and I zip tied it that little space there, that little stitched leather area. And this allows me to keep my phone here. Sure, it flops around a tiny bit, but it's not distracting or anything. It's worked perfectly for me so far. It's safe behind the windscreen too. Uh, so if it rains and I can just loop my power cable into my power outlets. 
And that's, that's the other thing. You might be wondering, hey, power outlets? What are you talking about? There's no power outlets on the 2015R1200R. Well, yeah, there is. There's one power outlet down here and it's the small BMW type. And I've got an adapter for that, which is great for feeding into the tank bag. But you know, if you have a navigation up front, you want the power up front too, to charge your GoPro batteries, to charge your drone batteries and to charge your navigation device, your phone. So what I did was I installed DC to dual USB female plugs. And there's a small step down module. I'll show you. This is my solution for powering. You've got these two plugs, just, there you go. One, two, they give me two sources of USB power in the front, which is everything you need. One for your phone, one for whatever battery you're charging at the same time. The leads just go right into the Moscow Moto NAT bag and you can get everything charged and you don't have this huge tank bag in your way that always gets in your way when you're getting gas. And I was never a tank bag fan, still am not but I love bar bags. Let me tell you a little bit more about this uh, solution real quick. The way I installed this is it's got a step-down converter. There's a little box here. It's teeny. I kind of put it out of the way in there, zip tied everything securely, and it runs these two uh, USB sockets up here. I zip tied it to a, an actual plastic piece on this unit here. And I can actually make a video how I did this, but it looks factory to me. I love it. Oh, and what does it connect to? It doesn't connect right to the battery. It connects to the CAN bus system because all of these bikes have this navigation CAN bus access here. So it's hooked up right there, which means there's no parasitic drain. When the bike is off, it's completely off. Some of these USB connectors that you buy, these cheap ones that hook directly to the battery, they always have a parasitic drain and you'll end up with a flat battery after a while. All you have to do is buy the repair pin connector and I can link it uh, in the video description. If you have any interest in this, uh, how I set this up, please leave a comment below and I'll post that video. It's very quick and it's very cheap. It's like a 35, under $40 solution to get power that looks factory on your bike. Let me talk a little bit about safety. These things already came on the bike when I bought it. I've got these Jivy sil aluminum cylinder head guards, protects the cylinder heads. Here, Jivy cylinder head guards. Uh, those came on the bike. I didn't pick them myself, but they're good to have. Uh, gives you a little extra layer of security. Then I've got some axle guards from Evotech and two here as well on the shaft drive. That's basically that kind of protection. But what I'm talking about is protection from theft. So we all know this is tours. You arrive at your motel at night. It's kind of in a shady area. You have no other option and you're worried about your baby at night. Okay, so what can you do? Well, number one, always use a disc lock, right? That That's just basic protection. The next thing you should always do is cover your motorcycle. And not only will that pr protect it from people that are uh, on the lookout for bikes that are just driving by and that sort of thing, they, they won't know what's underneath it. They'll know there's a bike, but they don't know if it's worth their while. The other thing is it protects from the weather. You know, if you get up in the morning and it's rained, the seat's all wet or there's frost on the seat, that kind of helps with that situation as well. And if you're worried about somebody stealing your cover, like a homeless guy coming up and uh, taking your cover and using it as a blanket or whatever, you can always uh, get a cheap bicycle lock and run it through the rings of the motorcycle cover. There's a bunch of motorcycle covers that have metal rings on the bottom near the front tire just for that purpose. But the, the main thing here is what happens if you're sleeping at night and somebody's messing around with your bike? Well, I have a solution for that too, and it's a very cheap solution. I've got this thing called a Fossman anti-theft alarm, which is actually made for bicycles, but it's vibration triggered. It's cheap, super cheap. I think it was like uh, around $30 or so. And I mounted it under the seat. As we all know, with these bikes, you've got this strap underneath the seat where the manual goes. The actual alarm fits perfectly under the seat uh, and is secured with that strap, doesn't move at all. Take your manual out. You don't really need your manual in there anyways. What I did is I put a toolkit under there and then this little alarm unit. And I'll show a picture of it on the screen here. Give you a demonstration here of the Fossman alarm. I'm gonna go ahead and lock my motorcycle. Here's the remote, there we go. So you, what you can do is you can set the alarm, you can unlock it, you can change the volume, and you can make it chirp. So why would you wanna make it chirp? Well, let's say you're uh, in a diner 
and some snot-nosed kid starts playing around on your bike. Do you need to put your food down, get up, and say, hey, kid, get away? No. All you need to take your little remote out. This thing has amazing range. Chirp it and scare the shit out of them. They won't be going near your bike again. But here's how it works, all right? So I'm going to lock it. You hear that? Super loud. And then it will be armed. All right, now it's armed. As soon as somebody either sits on your bike or moves it in any way or touches it, watch how sensitive this is. Whoa, 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 whoa. If you hit it again, it's gonna go into full alarm mode. That was just the warning shot. There you go. It's enough to get eyes on it. And that's the key. I think this is money well worth spent. 35 40 dollars for a little bit more security other stuff that i added to my bike let's let's talk about the exhaust real quick it's called a leo vinci factory s slip-on carbon the main good thing about it is it looks good the original unit looks really really ugly in my opinion huge chrome monstrosity and it saves a bunch of weight too i think it's uh, several pounds lighter than the original oem unit the sound is really good yeah it's got this uh deep deep rumble if you're on the gas is where you hear it the most and when you're uh downshifting it's got these really nice burbles you know this this exhaust is uh if you buy a new it's like around 900 dollars, and it already came on the bike would i buy it myself probably not i'm glad it came with the bike that was the reason that i one of the reasons that i got this bike is that it was very well equipped i think that about covers everything but if you have any questions just let me know if all this stuff has been tested works really really well i've done a lot of touring in europe with shad cases i'm happy with them they're waterproof never had any issue with them this touring platform is excellent i have to say it's a powerful bike super comfortable it has everything that you need for touring it's got a large gas tank i consistently get 53 miles to the gallon over 200 mile range easily it's got a shaft drive so no chain maintenance semi-automatic suspension keyless cruise control everything that you would want on a touring bike these bikes if you can find them cheaply and you can nowadays especially the r 1200rs they make an excellent excellent touring platform and then you can just rip all this stuff off in your garage in a few hours and you've got a uh, power naked again and i call it a power naked because it's got a lot of torque it's like a muscle naked let's put it that way yeah so this is a this is my touring setup it's awesome Happy with it. All right, and finally, as promised, this is what the bike looks like without the hard bags on. So you can see the uh, 3P mounting system right there. And I think it still looks pretty sleek. It kind of goes with the lines of the bike. Yeah, it looks good. Sure, this little top carrier here doesn't look wonderful, in my opinion. But, you know, it's all right. Another thing you can do, stick that on top, strap that on, and that's what the bike looks like. Has everything you need for the day. I know it's been a while since I made a video. I've just been riding the last couple of months down here. I've got quite a few videos on the back burner here that I'm ed currently editing. Rides in Germany and Austria and France and those will be coming up uh, shortly on the channel with my GSA. So uh, I did the German Alpine Road. I went out to the uh, highest mountain in the Vosges mountain range in France, and then uh, some awesome, awesome passes in uh, Eastern Austria, including one of my favorite passes ever, which is also the most dangerous road I ever rode. All of these videos are coming up. So if you're interested in touring videos, especially in Europe, consider subscribing helps out and uh, I'll see you in the next video.